Hello and welcome to Ballon Farm. This is episode 3 and we're up early and on the go before the sun's up. Well, we've been up since about 6 a.m. We've already collected the milk and put the milk into the creamery, into the dairy, and it's now time to start moving the dairy herd. So the trailer that I thought could carry 13 only carries 6. So it's going to be a long, long day ferrying cattle. A couple of other things that we'll need to do as well. We'll need to get the grass field, the uh, the top, well, the first top uh, top grass field cut, um, and we'll make that into hay. And I'm not sure whether we can feed hay in the barns but we'll see what happens if we can't fit, uh, feed hay we'll have to buy in some TMR I have made arrangements with the with the store to put a feed bin onto the farm that I can draw from and pay them whatever I use as and when I use it. It will remain on the farm and if ever I run short of something they can just deliver it to there for me. Right, that having been said, let's get the first lot in to the trailer and we'll take all the young stock first and we'll put them into the side shed it takes 20 so it'll be exactly the right for the young ones and the we'll just park up there and we'll let them all out there we go it's the first six so it actually takes 32 but we'll only put 20 in there. I just like to keep the young ones separate from the others because the young ones don't need to have TMR. And I'm just hoping, holding thumbs again, that the side shed will take take just plain hay. Right, so let's just back out there. And this is going to be the easiest way to ferry them is just to drive straight in and then reverse straight out rather than try to turn around right let's get back and get another lot out so i won't show all of the transportation i'm sure you'll get sick and tired of that there's going to be plenty of them There is still a little bit of milk left in this bottom field, which we'll collect in December. But the main aim of today's episode is to get all of the dairy cows into the barns. They will lose some condition from the transport, but that shouldn't be too bad. As long as I can get some feed into them by the end of the day, I'm pretty sure we'll get a fair production tomorrow. It won't be full production, but uh, it will be reasonable. Right, also today uh, we I will be around about game lunchtime. I will be just taking you through the way that I add and subtract money to the game with regard to the modification draws and the penalties and of course the non-penalties if you want to call it because there are advantages as well to the draws as we saw in the first one where we um, we actually got a tax rebate so we were able to get some money coming in which actually has helped tremendously but once we get to that stage uh, once we get to sort of lunchtime, it's sort of 12-ish on the game clock. I will um, take you through and show you how I'm doing that. 
Right. Lovely morning. Not so sure about the red sky in the morning. Is it shepherd's warning, I think, so hopefully we don't have to do this in inclement weather, but I don't think so. I think it looks good for the day. Right, so that's all the young ones finished. We're now going to start on the on the well they're not the they're the older group. I think they a couple of months younger than the the main group. So there's 50 of these and we'll put those into the old barn which can take 48 so won't be able to take the take all of them. I think uh, we need to put them in around the back. I think the put them through the back gate. It'd be easier than doing it through the front. Sunrise on Bellum Farm. Not sure the the cows appreciate this early morning start, but what can one do? <laughs> We've, there's so many of them to move. Of course, in real life, we would have just herded them up, but uh, there is not a a mod for that, as far as I know. Well, certainly not in console. I wonder if there's one on PC. I don't know. Well, I've got to stop this PC envy. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Right, so I think it's not quite the end of them. This should take them up to 30 out of 48. But because the sun's up and the kids stroke workers can see what they're going to be doing. I think I'm going to go and get the grass field sorted out or started. It's just as soon as I've offloaded this lot. Come on. There we go. In you go. Good stuff. Right, so we'll just swing this around and then I'll go and jump on the stire. I'll get the mower connected up. And once again, I'll do the headlands. And then we'll put that onto a worker and I'll get back to moving the cattle. So that's been normal. I'll try and cut the side as well. Might as well get as much grass as we can out of this field. Right, so got them on the go. Dual action is what is required. Well, what did what did my sergeant major used to say in the army days? Simultaneous action. Make sure you have simultaneous action going. Not always possible, but we will try. <laughs> Yeah, off we go. Time to offload. I think the day looks set to be fine, so I'll try and not make this episode too boring, so we'll probably probably just show you the first first run and last run. Yeah, so we're getting up to 48 cattle in there now, so that's that barn full. So we should still just have 52 to do. But it's getting to be around about lunchtime now. So I think we'll park up, go back home, have something to eat. And then I can just take you through how I place money. So what I've done is I've created a little administration area I think it's just around the back of the house here and there you can see I've got the subsidized by local municipality um, which gives us a daily income a small amount I think it's 5,400 
or uh, I'm not sure exactly how much it is. I'm, I should have checked that up before I came on. But because we we drew a tax rebate, we were allowed to place that out for two months. So it'll be effective. It was effective last month and the month before. So it needs to be removed this month. Uh, so I can see a problem with this area now because of the buildings. When I go into building mode, it's taking me onto the top of the roofs. I'll have to rethink that one, but in any event, maybe just operate from the other side or just find some place that's a little bit more open to put the administrative area in there. So we'll just take that out by using the the building mode. And then in January, when we draw again, whatever the modifier is, whether we have to add or subtract. So if we need to take money out, there's two ways we can do it. If it's a large amount that needs to come out, we can do it with the start from zero um, mod. But generally, I use the daily deductions mod, which has the boxes and the oil cans that you can place. So I've put out this picnic table to put them onto. And you find those in decorations. Well, once you've got the mod installed, of course. And I've got so much in these decorations that I need to look through that at some time or another. Ah, oh, there they are there. So depending on the amount that you've been told to deduct, you can place the corresponding daily deduction or combination of daily deductions to make up whatever the penalty is. I then just place it on the table. These de daily deductions are only deducted at midnight. So it's not too much of a problem when you paste, place them. You must just place them during the day. The municipality and government subsidies do need to be placed at the time of um, well as quickly as you can because they start earning straight away and they really should be I did take this one down a bit late so a little bit of a cheat there but they should be taken down first thing on the morning of the day that they are due to be removed so there we go there we've got the oil can placed on the table and then of course you allow that there to be to stay there for the rest of in this case it would be november and then in december first thing in the morning once you're on your way to go and start work you just remove it also through the through the building mode so that's basically how I add and subtract the daily modifiers as such. Of course, there's also the, the economic modifier, which is done on the 1st of January. And that, of course, you just go into your, into your settings and you just change that according to whatever mode, so either easy, normal or hard, depending on what the draw takes up. With the weather, with the weather um, modification, I've just done that to add in a couple of unusual weather phenomena. So like a heat wave or a flood or something like that. So you'll see that most of the time there's no change to the weather, it just follows the normal weather pattern, but sometimes there will be I think there's about three or four out of 14 that will allow that you would have to do something that might involve the crops or something along those lines. But that will be ex that is explained at the time uh, on, on the sheets once I do the drawing. So I hope that's a little bit clearer, but we will see in January we'll go through it and I'll go through it step by step as I do it as well. Thank you so much in the comments for, for asking about how I deduct and 
had money. Of course, that's a lot, a lot easier in uh, if you're running a, uh, if you're playing on PC because I think there is a mod that allows you just to add and subtract money as and when required. Right, so that's a grass cut. Now we don't have a tether, so I'm going to have to go and get a tether. Let's just offload this. Now I want to buy a tether because we're going to be doing a lot of grass work. The fields are not very big. But I think it's going to be dependent on price, really, because we're still a little bit short. We're only on 30,000, so it's going to be 16 for that, which is 9 meters. That's 8.7, but it's also 16. And 7,000 for just under 5. Ugh, I, can't, I can't justify spending the 16, half the amount of money that we have at this stage. I think uh, we'll go for the smaller one for now and we can trade it in and maybe keep an eye on the sales to see if there's a bigger one that comes up um, and we can put it on to I can get the kids to do the work once I <laughs> have done the, the headlands again and then, uh, yeah yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do yeah pretty yeah yeah no definitely definitely that's what I'm gonna do Right, let's get that. We'll pop on down to the store and go and pick that up. Here we go, down at the store now. It looks about the right size for this type of equipment as well, so... But, uh, I mean, both the other ones, both the 16,000, I think were... I think this is uh, 60 horsepower we buy, and they're only about 80, so we, we'd, we'd be quite comfortable with the tractors that we have. But yeah, it's just... You know, the difference in money was just too much. Right, let's get this back and get started on that, and we can finish get the uh, yeah let me finish that sentence first of all I've noticed that I have this habit of just dropping off sentences I've got to concentrate on that so in any, any event so let's get the headlands done so that we can get the kids onto tedding the rest of the field there we go yeah it's quite narrow really for a tedder but The others would have been a little bit wider, but it would have been pretty noticeable. But yeah, it's done. Nothing we can do about that now. Well, not short of trading this in just after we bought it, which I'm not going to do. It doesn't make any sense. The kids can graft on it. Right, so we've done a decent headland. Just swing around at the bottom and then get them going. quality of the glass is looking good. And we just have to hope that we can put the hay into the into the barns. Right, so just before we get back to the rest of the cattle ferrying, I think I'll do some replenishment of the markets and the farm shop in daylight so that you can have a little bit of a look I think the first two ones we done in the dead of night or certainly in the darkness of night right so we've got two butter and the cheese so we'll put the cheese into the into the farm shop and 
the better one each to the two markets. Right, let's drop that in there. Come on. There we go. That's a good. That's fine. That's fine. Get the other one loaded. At least this will top up the funds that we spent on the tether. I don't think it'll cover all of it, but it it may get close. So what we were we were on thirty thousand before we before we bought the tether twenty three. So the cheese the cheese will do the heavy lifting as such. So that's uh, should bring in a fair amount. We'll drop this off at the at the farm shop. So with regard to product, um, I don't think I've mentioned it, but because a lot of our product is perishable, I have made the decision that we will need to. Right, let's just first see how much we get for that. Yeah, three thousand. That we need to move our product every day. So we, the bulk of the milk must be must be done. We, we must do something with it. So it's either got to go into uh, the creamery or it's got to be sold to one of the um, outlets every day because that's what would happen in the majority of cases or in the majority of real life situations. So storing up until the best price is not an option on perishables. So that'll be our butters, our cheeses and milk. Of course with our grains and things and any other product that we make, if it if it's not perishable, then of course we can store it and wait until the best best time. So when I say must be sold immediately, either that day or the next day, as I'm thinking the way it should be it should be done. So if we have like two thousand litres of milk left over after we've cleared most of the milk for the day, then that can carry over until the next day. Right, so there there we go, that's the that's the duck pond market sorted. Pop up down to the golf club market and let that off. Offload that, not let that off. And offload that here. And we can get back to the cattle ferry. Right, so that's that done. Yeah, so we we almost covered it. But uh, that's probably overall about a, a grand short. So we're back to where we started, but we have it. We have a tether bought. I had to bite my tongue, but I'm going to say it. Can't complain about that. <laughs> right, here we go. So we've got 52 cattle still to, to move. We've got 50 of the of the 20 month, 21 month old, and we've got two left of the 18 month old. I think they're 18 months. And we'll get those into the new barn. And that shouldn't, well, it's going to take a while. Right, load up, we've loaded, and off we go. Lovely autumn colours at this time of the year. Right, so here we go. So I think I can do a nice little round trip on this load. Put the cattle go in here. And then I've opened up the bottom the bottom gate as well. There we go. Just get the angle right and 
save myself having to turn around or reverse out all the way there we go that's nice and easy so the only reason why I say I'm, I'm not sure where the hay will go in is that I, know, I did read a comment that the TMR you can only put you can only offload in from the TMR mixer into the into the barn from the left hand side of the of the TMR mixer, which makes sense because that's where the where the chute is. But that makes me wonder whether the whole barn has been set only for that type of operation. But we'll find out. We'll still, I mean, the, the hay won't go to waste because my feeling is that it will be able to get into the into the side barn and it certainly should be able to be utilized in the cattle barn, in the, in the meat cattle barn, so the, or the or the beef cattle barn, if you want to call it that, which which I we haven't looked at, so I think we'll we'll be doing we'll do quite a bit of work there in December, so you'll get to see that in December. So right now, I'm just want to try and get this up and running, and I have to start working out a system for December. I think. On, feeding, feeding and mixing, find out when the routine is to feed and mix because the silage mix is quite small so I think it's going to be quite a job. So it must, bull must probably be done in the sort of slightly darker hours and once we've gone through it a couple of times will be taken as As done in terms of the game well when I say it'll, it'll it'll be done but I may not show it every single time just because it would be part of the routine so eventually I'll be just showing parts of the routine just to make sure that the videos are sort of watchable length but we will visit them each of the routine things the routine operations during the course of the videos just may not be all of them. For argument this morning I didn't show the collection of the of the milk because we've seen that in the but it will be shown at some time again. Especially if there's a change so you know once we've got the now that we've got the the cattle into the barns it's all done now. Um, I'll have to show you where the where we collect the milk from tomorrow morning. Right, so back to the fields now. Let's go and rake it all up and windrow it. Kids did a sterling job. Didn't have to do much. much uh, sorting out after they had finished uh, I'll just do this my own uh, on my own it's a bit dark so I prefer to do it myself rather than to leave it to the kids in the dark it's one of the things about farming in the UK is the is the daylight hours not as bad as some places but yeah we're going to have to work in the dark in the mornings and the evenings just because if we don't we will have a very very short day and we'll get nothing accomplished. Right so that hasn't wasn't too much of a problem. I think we've just got this and a little bit more to sort out at the top and then we can collect some some hay and finally find out whether 
we can put it into the barns or not. Right, that's perfect. I didn't get any of the other rows already done. And that's just about done. Right, let's get this folded up. I'm going to pick up the forage harvest or the forage wagon. We've still got uh, quite a bit of straw at the top, the top field. I'm just not finding the time in the day to be able to collect it. And tomorrow's going to be another, or December's going to be another day of, of fearing cattle. Quite glad that the style has got reasonably good light on it. So I'm not struggling too much with picking up the grass. Right. Oh. Nick, nick the uh, front tire again. Trying to rush now because I've got to get these cows fed. The uh, condition is dropping every every hour that we don't have feeding. Right, so we get this in. Now I spent quite a bit of time trying to find a trigger to put hay in, and I couldn't. And um, every time. It just says hay not accepted and that's applied to both the new cow barn and the old cow barn. So I'm just going to try it once more. Yeah, didn't work. The only good thing is that we were able to put it into the side shed so they are on on hay. So we did get some TMR bought in. It was just over 500 pounds per load. I put three loads in here and two loads into the other barn and that should give us a fair well it will give us enough for the for today and tomorrow and then we should have the silage should be ready tomorrow, so we can, and we'll have hay, although it'll be loose hay, and we'll be able to mix our own silage tomorrow. It's probably won't have straw in it, but that is the, this is the bin that, I've just got a fleeting view of the bin. Right, let's just go and have a look and see, yeah. So, the side has got plenty of hay in it. The new cattle shed, 22,000 odd litres of mixed rations, so that should be fine. And the old barn has got 11,000, so that should be fine. Yeah, that should be good enough. Yeah, as I was saying before, I decided to check it out. This is the the bin that the store put in. So they keep TMR in there if I need to top up and charge us accordingly. Now, I did have to pay them to put that in. It wasn't all that expensive. It was a, a joint venture, so I had to pay £2,500 to put it in, but it does give us peace of mind, and generally speaking we will not be using it unless it's an emergency, like it is today. So we had that 11000 in the old barn, so we'll just put this load in here as well, don't think it'll take it all. And finish off by putting the balance into the into the new barn 
And the problem is they keep having to shoo these cars away. They seem to get into the centre of it. One of the little glitches that could possibly be looked at. They just seem to be walking through the fences. Not too much of a problem again. I think we can get out here and just close up the gates now. Close up the top gate, we don't want them wandering out into the yard. Right, do we have any left in there? Yeah, yeah, we've still got some left in there. So while we're here, we'll just close up the skate as well. Getting ready for the end of the day. So because the hay is not really needed in terms of feeding the the dairy cattle, I'm not going to collect it tonight we'll collect it as and when needed tomorrow when we're moving the the beef cattle we'll get a reasonably early night tonight seeing as we worked until the all hours of this morning and it's been a long long day then the, at the end of the day we also need to rest ourselves so we'll just put this into the To the old barn and then we'll call it a day once again thank you so much for watching I do appreciate it thank you for the comments that I've received on this new series much appreciated If you have enjoyed this episode and this series, please like and subscribe.